Hello and welcome. Uh, this is the second part of the floating exercises that we started in week seven. Uh, this week I'm just going to do a little bit of review and then we're going to talk about how we clear floats. Uh, we touched on it a little bit in week seven. Then issues related to what's called the collapsing parent and how do we deal with that? What are some workarounds? To begin with, just a little review. I have created basically the same thing that we were looking at uh, last week, just some different colors, but in essence, it's the same thing. So we have this header that contains just our the words floats review. Then we have three boxes. I did three instead of four, but we have three boxes and a footer. And you can see this pale colored piece in the background. That is our main. So let's just go take a look at the code real quick. So here is exactly what I said that we have. Here is our header. Then we have main that contains each of the boxes and we have a footer. The way that this is portrayed right now is the natural flow, you know, what HTML wants to do when you don't use any floats. And so last, uh, in week seven, you, you got some exercise floating left and right and seeing what would happen with those boxes. So I just thought I would go over just a little bit of review. To do this, I'm using a tool in Firefox called Firebug. You are more than welcome to install this. It's a handy little tool for, well, the reason it's Firebug is it's, it's designed to help you debug code, but it also works really well for development. You do need to use Firefox for this. There are versions for Safari, and I believe there might be a version for Chrome. I haven't tested out the one in Chrome. The one in Safari I don't like as well. So I'm using this one in Firefox. It's an extension. So like I say, feel free to go ahead and install this. But what I've done is I've opened it up. That's what we see along the bottom. And on the left-hand side here, it shows us the code for our page. And on the right-hand side, it shows us the CSS that applies to whatever element we have selected. So there's a couple different ways that we can select elements. One is we can use this tool right here and we can highlight over it. And you'll notice the blue box that appears and then down below in the code, it's highlighting where that particular element is in the code. So then I can go ahead and click on it. And now that it's clicked on, on the right hand box down here, I can see the styles that are applied to it. So I can see that there's a background color, there's a width, then there's a border radius, the text color, and a height and a padding applied to it. The other thing is, the reason I'm doing this is because we can actually highlight right over, like in this case, this word div, and it's gonna highlight in the box up above what that box looks like. And in this case, the purple represents the padding that we've given it, and this has a 10 pixel padding. And then the light blue shows the area of the actual box. So this is the part that's the 33% and is 100 pixels tall. So think back to the box method. And we can go ahead and do this. So for main, you can see that covers that whole area. Header, we also have a padding applied to that, and that covers the whole width. So this is, in essence, what our HTML flow is going to be. And we know from last week that we can alter that by using floats. So let's go ahead and add some floats to these boxes. And I'm going to do it right here in Firebug because it affects it locally here and you're gonna be able to see it on the screen. So I'm gonna go into box one and I'm gonna give it a float of right. And you'll see that it goes over there and box two comes up. Likewise, then if I go into box two, I can give that one a float. And if I also give that one a float of right, it's gonna populate in and because these are all 33%, it's gonna fill in. But notice there is some overlap because we're losing box three's kind of rounded edge. And part of that is because if you remember the box model, let me go over this one. So there's box three, you can see how it is actually there but it is underneath box two. And it's because each of them has been set to 33% plus 10 pixels of padding on both the right and the left. So we would actually have to reduce that percentage in order to make it fit better. So for example, let's just start playing with some numbers. I'm gonna do 30% and that's on box two. 
So now this is box two and box three. So let's go change it for each of these boxes. I'm gonna change each of them to 30% and let's see, box three, 30%. And now you can see there it is. They're not overlapping anymore. But in this case, box one and box two have a float right added to them and box three has populated up right below the header because it still is within the normal flow of our HTML.